Hey there guys, Zelda42293 here, welcome to Love the Strange. In this episode we're going to be starting the Kate route. Let's go ahead and jump right in, start her route. Uh, I pick my camera up off, the, off of my desk and make my way over to Kate, who's still looking at me. I'm so excited for you, Max! This contest was made for you! I wish I could feel the same way. I'm already nervous. You'll do fine. We smile at one another for a moment, and I fidget. I wonder if it'd be okay to ask Kate if my intuition is right. Something else has been on her mind lately. I should let her know that it's okay if she doesn't want to enter the contest. Or be my partner, for that matter. So, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to be my partner for the contest. You definitely don't have to, but I thought it might be fun to finally get to work together. You've got a great artistic eye, and... Kate's not saying much. She's got her hands folded together, and she's looking down at them. I decide to shut my big fat mouth. Finally, she speaks quietly. I like that very much. Oh, Kate. I'm really happy to hear that, but... You don't have to. I know you have, um, lots of work to do, usually. With your art classes and being Mr. Dog's assistant in your club... Kate suddenly laughs, high and sweet. Max, I always had time for you. As long as you're totally serial. I have a... I know you have a lot on your plate. Completely. I'm flattered, you asked. We're interrupted by Mr. Dog's trailing back to the front of the classroom and clearing his throat. Alright, alright, I've got to get into today's lecture. If you haven't picked a partner yet, be sure that you do before class lets out. I settle back into my seat as the lesson begins, but I can barely focus. All I can think about is the contest. When class lets out, it feels like hours later, and I leap out of my seat. Kate is still seated by the time I cross over to her desk. She's drawing in her sketchbook again, her pencil making a faint path over the page. Hey, Kate. Hi, Max. She greets me without looking up at first, and then she sets her pencil down and starts tucking her sketchbook away. If you're sure you want to work together for the contest, we should let Mr. Dog know. I'm sure that I'm sure. I pick Kate's book bag up off the floor as she, for her as she pushes her chair out and stands. She gives me a grateful smile. <coughs> Thank you, Max. I'll take it. <coughs> she reaches out for her bag. Her shoulder seems to slump slightly beneath its weight. Or maybe I'm just imagining things. I follow Kate towards the front of the classroom and we give Mr. Dog our names for the contest registration sheet. After that's done, Kate turns to me. I want to contribute as much as I can to this, even if I'm not much of a photographer. Don't sell yourself short, your work is really strong. I'm more of an illustrative artist. But to be able to draw professionally, you have to teach yourself about scale and perspective and proportions, right? All of that stuff applies to photography, too. I guess I never thought about it that way. Sometimes I sketch in my journal. I've learned lots of things that learned lots of, about how much photography is coming common with drawing just by doodling. I'd love to see your sketches sometime. I bet they're wonderful. They're really not that great, I swear. Aw, oh, Max is blushing. Now it's my turn to reassure you, isn't it? You got me there. Okay, okay, I'll show you. Kate smiles, her eyes sparkling. We can save that for, late, for a later date. For now, we've got the contest. Right. Do you want to meet tomorrow and do some morning and do some planning? Like, for where we're going to take this photo? I was just about to ask you the same thing. Well, how about the two whales? I'm never not in the mood for a good breakfast. Same. So it's settled. I've got to catch my next class, but I'll message you later to set up the time. Sounds good. I pause, hesitating as I look at Kate's tired face. Thanks for partnering with me, Kate. Take care, okay? I will, Max. I'll see you tomorrow. Kate's chin dips toward her chest as she leaves the classroom. I hope she's alright. She's as warm as ever, but I can, can't help but feel that something is off. 
I hope I'm wrong, but maybe this contest will help her take her mind off of whatever it is. Oh, poor Kate. I hope she's alright. It's about 10 in the morning by the time I get to the diner the next day. There's still a decent crowd, even though it's a little before the lunch rush. Mostly the usual suspects enjoying a little breakfast, or a late breakfast. Truckers, cops, and a few students like me. Joyce keeps a watchful eye over these particular patrons. She smiles at me, however, and I wave at her. There's no shortage of sheets, so I idle, idle by the door for a moment. Yesterday, Kate and I agreed to meet here so that we could discuss locations for the contest photo. I was a little hesitant to ask her for help at first. Kate seems to have a lot on her mind lately. She's been more shy than usual, rarely emerging from her dorm room except to go to class. I'm not sure what's going on, but I don't want to give her more stress than she already has. But seeing her face light up reassured me that I had made the right choice in asking her. Maybe this will help her get off whatever's bo her mind off whatever's bothering her. Or at least make her laugh when I make an ass out of myself at entering a shitty photo. Speak of the devil. Or angel in this case. Kate enters the diner. She looks a little bewildered, but she smiles when she sees me beckoning her to stand next to me. Hi, Kate. Hey, Max. Sorry if I kept you waiting. I've actually never been here before, so I had to look up the bus schedule before I left. She may have kept me waiting all of three minutes, if that. It's not the first time I've had to wait on someone. Take Chloe, for example. Don't get me wrong, she's my best friend, but... A girl can't keep an appointment to save her life. <laughs> we all know how true that was in the last route. Kate, on the other hand, is almost painfully considerate. Always putting other people first. I guess that's what makes me want to look out for her. The thought of someone as sweet as Kate losing her reasons to smile seems wrong. No worries. Is the booth okay? I gesture to one in the corner near the old jukebox. Kate nods when we make our, make our way over to it, sitting on opposite sides. Wow, does it always smell so good in here? She looks like she's literally in heaven from the smell of the delish breakfast food being prepared. I can't help but smile as I reply. Yes, Joyce is an amazing cook. She'll take good care of you. A waitress shows up to take our drink orders, coffee for me, and tea for Kate. She may be an early bird, but I need my caffeine fix. When the waitress comes back, I order my usual stack of pancakes, and Kate orders the same thing, apparently trusting my judgment. When Kate takes a sip of her tea, she practically melts into the cushion behind her, like she's truly relaxing for the first time in a while. I notice the shadows under her eyes for the first time since we sat down, and I feel a pang of uneasiness in my stomach. She looks really tired. I can't help but wonder how she's doing. Should I say something about it? Uh, oh, she's okay. Are you feeling okay? No offense, but you look a little worn down. She seems surprised that I asked, but recovers almost immediately. I'm fine, just a little stressed out with, you know, life in general. I'm still not sure she's telling me everything, but I better not push her for now. She probably has her reasons. I hear that, but listen, if you need to talk about anything, I'm here, okay? I get another genuine smile out of her as she sips her tea again, the warmth of it putting some color back into her cheeks. Thanks, Max. I really do appreciate it. Our food arrives and I immediately dig in, not realizing how hungry I had been until Joyce's famous pancakes were right under my nose. Looks like someone's hungry. <laughs> I look from the half-eaten meal on my plate to Kate, hardly touched in comparison. I can hear my mom ch chiding me in the back of my head, but the grin on Kate's face tells me that she hardly minds. It's warm and glowing, and makes me smile right back at her like a huge dork. Kate seems to have that effect on me. More than I thought, apparently. Kate just laughs. I don't blame you. These are better than anything I've ever had in the Blackwell cafeteria. Make sure you pass that on to Joyce. I will if I see her before we leave, but... She probably hears that thing all the time. I shouldn't bother her. 
I reach across the table and nudge her hand gently with my own. You're a never a bother, Kate. You've got to believe that. She looks at her hand, then back up to me, grinning again. I'll try, Max. She smiles so much when we're alone together. Kate doesn't open up to a lot of people, preferring to keep to herself most of the time. I'm one of the lucky ones that sees to, that gets to see her other side of, gets to see the other side of Kate, her chatty, bubbly side. It makes me feel awesome. After I finish inhaling my breakfast and Kate goes about eating hers, I decide to bring up the contest entry. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so we need to think of a game plan. Kate looks up from where she's been twirling her fork and the remnants of her pancakes, giving me her full attention instead. Right. What did you have in mind? Hmm. The location of the photo is going to be really important, so let's focus on that first. Do you have any... I stop. Suddenly, very aware of Kate's eyes on me. Not focusing on my words, but on me in particular. What? Do I have something on my face? Kate laughs, breaking the tension in an instant. Yes, actually, you've got a bit of... here. She leans over the table between us and gently wipes the corner of my mouth with a napkin. She does it so naturally and gently that I barely have time to register what's happening. Before I can react, she's seated again. There. That's better. Um, thanks? I touch the side of my mouth where Kate's hand had ghosted, feeling a slight heat in my cheeks. It felt really nice to get her attention. Alright, Max. Focus. The contest, remember? See, that's why I picked you to be my partner, Kate. I'd be all over the place without you. Yeah, about that. Kate fingers her cross necklace self-consciously, like there's something on her mind. What's up? Kate shrugs, looking away. Are you worried about the contest? It's not that. Her eyes snap back to mine. I'm not worried about you handling the contest, Max. I'm just not sure why you picked me to help you. What do you mean? I haven't been feeling myself lately. What if I slow you down or mess you up? I just don't think I'm as talented as you. If I'm screwed, if I screwed up your chances of winning, I'd feel awful. Wow, she's really beating herself up over this. Kate. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should pick somebody else to help you, instead of me. I won't have any hard feelings, I promise. There's no way I'd want anyone else to help you besides Kate. What would I say to reassure her? You can do it. I shake my head. Sorry, that's not gonna happen. But, I picked you to help me because I thought we'd make a great team. I know how you set up a nice sh I know how to set up a nice shot, sure, but I have trouble bringing it to life. I've seen your art for those little children's comics you make. They're so... vibrant. There's so much emotion in your work, it's incredible. Kate looks shocked, looking down again. Oh, Max, you are way too nice. I'm serious, Kate. You're an amazing artist, just the kind of person I want working with me. So don't worry, okay? With you on my team, I know our entry is going to be great. I'm not a motivational speaker, but Kate actually looks hopeful after I say that. Okay, you're right. Go Team Max! I put my hand over hers and smile. You mean Team Max and Kate? We finish our drinks and get ready to exit the diner. According to my phone, it's only been an hour since we sat down to breakfast, so there's still plenty of time left in the day. Where to now, Max? Do you have any ideas for a location? I do. I know just the place. <laughs> From the Two Wells Diner, we head back to Blackwell. I decide to take Kate up to the roof of the dormitories. She's not gonna jump, is she? The view from up here is up there is gorgeous, so I have no doubt in my mind that we'll be able to get some good shots. Technically, students aren't allowed up here on the roof, and the door leading up to it is locked at all times. Luckily, being the nosy student that I am, 
I know where the head of security keeps the keys. David, why do you gotta leave it in such an obvious place then? Usually, Chloe's the one borrowing the keys when she and Rachel sneak up to the roof for a smoke. I'm feeling a little adventurous today. Maybe it was just the anticipation of getting the photo for the contest. Or maybe it's just the smile from Kate's face, silently cheering me on. She has so much faith in me. I know she's worried about letting me down, but there's no way that will happen. I meant what I said to her in the diner. Kate is so talented, even if she doesn't see it yet, and deserves to feel good about herself. I really hope she likes where we're going. Outside, it's overcast, and the outline of the sun is visible behind a thin cluster of clouds. The tops of pine trees surround us on all sides, the sound of them swaying in the wind, along with the happy songs of blue jays and sparrows, are the only noises we can hear. It's so peaceful, like a private world. Kate's eyes are wide as she takes the view in the view around us. Wow, Max, it's so pretty up here. I know. I love coming up here and just forgetting about the world for a little bit, you know? Kate exhales softly, thoughtfully, and looks down at her shoes. I know the feeling. She sounds troubled, like she did back at two wheels. I hate to keep bothering her about it, but I can tell that something is eating her up inside. I'm just about to ask when she cuts me off. But I thought students shouldn't be allowed up here. Her eyes go to the key ring sticking out of my pocket of my jeans. Oops. I, uh... I try to think of a good excuse, but come up with nothing. I'm a terrible liar, anyway. I look away from her, embarrassed at being caught. She seems to be abused of my reaction, at least, crossing her arms with a shy smile. Are you supposed to have those keys, Max? <laughs> I shrug my shoulders and managed to meet her eyes. Honestly, no. I probably should have asked, but the view from up here is so cool, and I wanted to make sure you got to see it. Kate's, uh, Kate's eyes soften, and I can feel a blush rise to my cheeks. And the photo, of course. There's probably a great shot we can find up here. Sorry for making you an unwilling accomplice. I do feel the. I do feel bad. The last thing I want, and the last thing Kate needs, is to get her in trouble over something as dumb as a contest photo. Oddly enough, Kate doesn't seem too concerned. If you're trying to bring out my rebellious side, it's working. She grins shyly. She grins slightly, and I feel myself grinning too. Wait, you have a rebellious side? She looks away, suddenly shy. Well, only sometimes. Anyway, I trust you, Max. If you think it'll be fine, then I'm sure it will be. I walk over to the edge of the roof to see if there's anything that stands out on the ground below. The watchful eye of the Tabanga peers up at me, and beyond it, I can see some wildlife that wouldn't be visible to the casual observer on the ground. Along with the, unusual, along with the usual crowd of squirrels, there is a small family of deer, two fawns, and their mother walking slowly among the trees. Oh, Kate, come check this out. She takes a step forward, then stops. I... I don't know, Max. We're really high up. I give her an encouraging smile as I hold out my hand to her. <coughs> let me help. I won't let anything bad happen to you. I can tell... I can't tell if she's even heard my voice over the strong gust of wind that picks up around us, but she takes my hand anyway. Together, we walk to the edge of the roof and peer down over the ledge. Kate's gentle grip on my hand tightens just slightly, and I squeeze it reassuringly. With her eyes find the, when her eyes find the family of deer, she lets out a small noise of delight, and I steal a glance in her direction. She looks incredibly happy, better than she has all week. The wind's making her bun a little messy, causing a few locks of her hair to fall on her face, but she barely notices. She looks so lovely, all traces of fear gone from her face as she watches the doe and her fawns on the ground. And suddenly, I'm aware of the dorky grin on my face from staring at her. 
but I'm just so happy that I could make Kate smile after the hard week she's had. She deserves it, after all. <coughs> Someone throws a football directly into the, into the brush where the deer were gathered, causing them to scatter in the blink of an eye. Thanks, asshole. I can't help but think, wondering which of Black Hole's brainless shocks was responsible this time. The noise also spooks some birds in a nearby tree, and they fly right over our heads, so close we can hear the sound of their wings flapping. Kate stares after them as they cross the skyline, smiling dreamily. She looks back down to where the deer had only been a few moments ago, concern flooding, flooding her features. I hope they weren't too frightened. I'd hate for those cute little fawns to get separated from their mom. I squeeze her hand again, a natural instinct. Kate is so concerned for everything around her, even the ones she can't help. It's one of the many things that draws me to Kate makes me want to protect her any way I can. She looks down at our joined hands, and there's a pause. Without the birds and the deer, there's nothing to distract us from the fact that we're so close. Our eyes meet, and there's a funny feeling in my chest, but strangely enough, I don't mind it. Kate laughs shakily, letting go of my hand, and I could swear I saw a hint of blush on her cheeks, but it might be just my imagination. She backs away from the edge of the roof. Do you mind if I sit for a while? That was a bit of a rush for me. I nod immediately, sinking down next to her. Of course, sorry if I made you too nervous. She shakes her head. No, you made me feel really brave, actually. I don't feel that way very often. We sit in silence for a few moments, just listening on the sounds of nature around us. My thoughts are on the contest photo, but I'm not too concerned about it. There's tons of great shots to be seen from up here. Kate seems to be deep in thought about something else, though. After a while, she says something barely above a whisper. I'm actually jealous of them. Jealous, jealous of who? Does she mean... The deer? You mean the deer? Not really. I'm already too much like a deer. Too shy and always jumpy. I'm scared of the world. She stops herself and looks at me apologetically. No offense, Max. I know they're your favorite. They are. But she has a point. None taken. She relaxes again, but looks out into the distance. Com Complentative. Still, they are good at running away. Escaping isn't hard for them. But I'm not sure I understand what Kate is talking about. Kate, what do you need to escape from? Her expression dims again and she looks out over the trees. Whatever's weighing her mind must be pretty heavy. <clears throat> Kate takes a deep breath as another breeze blows past us, exhaling along with it. Does it really matter? I'm just so tired, Max. I can feel my heart wrench in my chest at the sadness of her voice. Duh, it matters. You matter. Kate, please trust me on this. Kate doesn't respond immediately, looking down at her hands. I'm trying, Max. It's just really hard right now. Why? People have been not so nice to me lately. Kids at Blackwell, I mean. What the hell? I want to interject, but Kate's not finished speaking. You know how I started a pop a weekly Bible study group? Turns out that, that kind of stuff is not very popular with the cool kids here. <clears throat> I keep getting mean notes, taunts in the hallways. Sarah called me an awful nickname that I'd rather not repeat. It's all so stressful, I just feel like I need to run away or something. My mind is already racing with questions. Most of which concerning what kind of asshole you'd have to be to be cruel to Kate Marsh. That is so messed up. I'm sorry, Kate. It's not your fault. I should be stronger, like you. <clears throat> but I'm just not. I have to convince her otherwise. Kate, you are strong. <clears throat> Kate, don't say that. You are one of the bravest people I know. You would have already given up if you weren't. 
She grunts, frustrated. I want to believe that's true, but... I inch closer to her, that, so that her shoulders touch. Listen, you believe me, right? She looks at me and nods, so I smile back in reassurance. Well, I'm telling you that you're doing a great job. You still hold those meetings every week despite getting sh crap for it. Kate smiles at that, another small laugh escaping her. Nice save, Max. Her laugh, quiet but genuine, it instantly makes the knot of anxiety in my stomach loosen somewhat. There's the Kate I know. They haven't beaten you yet. You're still smiling. Kate looks at our shoulders, then back to me. Thanks to you. I'm desperately fighting off a blush at that. I'm just glad I could help. Aw, oh, Max has the hots for Kate! You really did? Thank you, Max. She bumps my shoulder with her own softly, and I can tell she means it. A gust of wind, stronger this time, blows past us. It's getting kind of chilly. Maybe we should head back. She fixes me with a mock serious face. And you have some keys to return, before they start a criminal record for you. Seeing Kate in good spirits again makes me grin uncontrollably. I give her a little sleep. Yes, ma'am. Alright guys, I'm gonna cut it off here. Man, I didn't know Kate had such a rebellious, rebellious eye. I actually thought she was gonna demand we put the keys back. But anyways, next video, we'll uh, continue on with the Kate route. My name is Zelda42293, and I'll see you all in the next video.